excuse of a rainy day today to do some maintenance, some long overdue maintenance. In fact, if you look at the tread wear, this is the R1, the front, and we're we're well into the bars now, so no point no point belaboring the point that we need a new front tire. We've got a brand new, a brand new Michelin Power 3. Look at the difference between <laughs> this is almost a slick. But anyway. We're going to use this rainy day to mount this tire up. Uh, I promised my friend in Portugal next time I did a front tire swap. I'd kind of show it on video, so that's what we intend to do. And step one on any tire change is we got to get the bike safely with the front end off the ground so we can work on it. Now my first step, as I always do, is put the rear stand on. That stabilizes the bike. That's the an important first step. I don't... I've tried this a lot of other ways. This is the way I'm showing is the way I've been, I think is the safest and the most practical way to do any bike. Get the back stabilized. Now the other step is I have the back supported of course. I have my Harbor Freight come along and I have a lot of safety here now. Because one of the things I never want to have happen is when I'm working on a bike that it tips over. Well, with a come along, even attached if it's not under tension, it's a good safety thing just to keep the bike in, in the event you bump into it or you can't get a bolt tight or something. And, and we all know these things don't always go as smooth as, uh, as, as possible. Anyway, that's the first step. Get the bike all supported here. And then I'm ready to start. Now, the first thing I do, and it's just I've done this tire change several times already, so I know the routine. I want to get the calipers off and get them zip tied up under the fairing and get them out of my way. Now as I take the calipers off, of course they come right off with two bolts. I can look at the, uh, the amount of material we have left on these pads. And by the way, the front brake on the R1 is just an incredibly good front brake. It's got uh, 21,000 and we still have some good material. These are the original pads. Some good good life out of that but as you can tell and a lot of people they always go look at the back tire of a bike they go, oh you got a chicken strip well you know if you really want to see something look at where the front tire where it stops being rough and it'll not at the wear edge unless you're on a track you're not going to get down to the edge anyway but where it stops being rough and that's a good indication of how aggressive you've been riding a bike anyway we're going to get some zip ties Pull these up under the fairing. They have to be out of the way before we can work on this. Now one thing, once you get the calipers off, and again I have them hanging up with multiple zip ties, I just want them out of my way. I want to avoid hitting the front brake. Because what it'll do, it'll push the calipers together, and I don't want to have to get in there with a screwdriver and, and if, if do anything to damage those pads. Now next step on an R1, and I, most of the sport bikes are very similar. The big nut that goes on the end of the axle, loosen the four bolts here, and the axle will pretty much slide right out. And now is when it's handy to have it just a couple inches extra off the ground so you have some room to work. Now unless you haven't had a bike apart in many, many years, usually there isn't any corrosion on the axle. But just to be safe, I like to get my feet underneath here so I can pick up on the tire a little bit. It just makes pulling the axle out a little easier. And before I put this back, I'll take just the slightest bit of wheel bearing grease so that it comes out again and doesn't rust and rot and corrode and everything. And I'm so used to working on really old bikes that working on a bike like this, it's only, this is an 09, seven years old. A bike's only seven years old. It's a pleasure to work on because there's no real heavy corrosion and heavy things that, uh, that are a problem. Now, I got I think I'm gonna have to jack the bike up just a tad more here. I see right now, that's gonna, yep, the spacer fell out is what happened. There's a spacer, here we go. Always be aware there's one on each side. I always like to put the one that goes on that side there, even though they're exactly the same. And as we found out doing the Kawasaki, these wheels are, some wheels are symmetrical and some aren't. Some can go either way. I don't know if this can, but I'm going to mark this side because I want it to go back exactly the same way. So I'll just mark that side with an ink mark. Now anytime I have anything apart, 
In this case, something I, it's a lot easier to clean the rim inside here by the spokes and behind the disc. A, a ton easier to clean this wheel while it's separated from the motorcycle. So, and boy, you know, you have no idea how much nicer it is to work on new stuff than on old corroded stuff until you work on old corroded stuff for a long time. But anyway, I do, anytime I have anything apart, I can use that as an excuse to clean it. Thoroughly simple green in this case. Get in here with that stick. And I'll spend four or five minutes just cleaning this up. And re-clean it before I put it back on the motorcycle, of course. But these things are... Now, I was going to paint the rims on this bike over the winter. Maybe I, maybe I still will. I don't know. But depending on how much work we have in the shop, how much time I have available with the baby and everything. With the baby in school, my schedule has totally changed. But here's the good news. To, to paint the rims on this, removing the disc and paint these rims, what I don't like is they paint them nice and shiny out here, not painted, they're powder coated. And, and in here they don't polish them, so I would be able to polish the whole thing up, and no matter what color I decide to paint them, and that, the, the, the jury is certainly out on that. But I do like to me it's a special thing when I could work on something that's clean and not dirty and corroded. Okay, next tool we need is the little tool to actually let the air out of the tire. Better we should just take the valve out right now. And by the way, I have Curvy Girls. These valve stems from Curvy Girl have proven to be uh, really convenient to use. But Rather than trying to just let out all the air, which you never, you never really get the last little bit out, it's just really better to just take the valve out, I think, anyway. And then we start to have this ongoing conversation, is it our lucky day? Because sometimes these tires jump on and off, sometimes they don't jump at all. All right, once the air is out of that, you can hear it coming out, be ready for the next step. A little trick that might be useful. I spray a little soapy water or simple green. What that does, and I'm trying to be very gentle, it just lets everything slide down a lot more conveniently. It's not warm enough today and because it's raining. Can't really put the tire out in the sun and warm it up, so that then becomes a problem. And this is the second side. I just want to have it all nice and loose. This is simple green, but soapy water is just as good. Dawn soapy water. Again, this is one of the tools from Harbor Freight. This was about 25 bucks if I remember right. And even though it's an inexpensive tool, it does work the way it should. And all we need to do is get the tire off the bead right now, let plenty of soapy water get in there. Now, if this were a sunny day, I'd already have the new tire out in the sun or sitting on the hood of the car, especially in my case, because we have all black cars. But today, that's not going to work. We're going to have to use some alternative way. And by the way, this is a, a great little tool, Harbor Freight. Inexpensive, works as advertised. Now, this is the part that some people find tricky or they wind up damaging your rim. And obviously, if you have a friend with a tire machine, that's great. The idea is to keep this part of the tire down into this valley while you're doing this. So, and I'm on a double carpeted garage, so what I try to do is use my, my knees, my body weight, whatever you want to call it, body weight, oh my god. I got some nice rusty old tire irons that have done a lot of tires. They have really done a lot of tires. Back in the, back in the day. And when it's your lucky day, of course, you never know when that day is coming. Maybe we can 
get this one in here. In fact, we almost don't have to do that. That's why I have so many designs. You never have too many. Now the reason these, <laughs> anybody doesn't know, the reason they have these wires on them so you can fish them out when you're done. And basically that tire will come right off now. And inside, of course, it's uh, there's, there's another one in there. You never have too many rim protectors, by the way. If you have 10 of them, use all 10 of them, that's all. Now, from this point on, you have several choices. And what I'm going to try to do is the, is the really old school way of just pulling this off. But a lot of times that can be, and let's just see, again, I thought it might not be our lucky. Now, believe it or not, modern sport bike tires are the easiest to change at all. Old, the old school tires are the ones that are with the tubes and stuff and make you crazy. That water rim protector, that's good. And it's like magic. Let me get rid of that. Now we'll do a thorough job of cleaning this up even more and then figure out how we're going to heat the new tire. Guys, information that might not know this, these are the bars. When you wear into these bars, of course you're supposed to replace the tire. I've gone for a couple extra rides here and I think a couple of them were with Jose here that we really put this to the test. But anyway, it, what happens, the tire doesn't wear even. It's not nice and round and the handling gets wonky where you fall into corners, you fall one way. And it gets very unstable at the very end. As soon as you hit those bars, it's really, I should have done this. I'm, I'm being honest. I should have done it a while ago. So we're going to take a break from this for a minute here. Turbo Steve is here. And I wanted to show this on a video. He brought this picture. He did a, a Photoshop of, uh, put Kenny Roberts on my bike. That's pretty cute. Anyway. Oh, here he is now. Nice picture, by the way. I, what would have been better if you put Kenny Roberts, really, if I was Kenny Roberts? Uh, Steve's going to come and change his tire for me while I go have coffee. Anyone can be Kenny Roberts. Anybody can no, change No, I thought tire. I'd use this as an opportunity just to try something, because I'm always looking to experiment with new stuff. I thought, as an example, just to demonstrate this, here's the rim. It's cleaned up, pretty much uh, ready to put the tire on. And... I wanted to try, a, and this is not the tire, but this might not be a bad idea to get the right tire. Look at this, I'm going to put the old tire on. That's pretty funny. Can't make that up. Maybe I should put the new tire on instead of the old one. Anyway, let's get rid of the tire. Let's get rid of this. You can't make that. I didn't really plan that either. Let me just see. We're putting it on the right way. Uh, and I wanted to demonstrate this. I guess I didn't have enough coffee this morning. Okay, this is the right way. First off, there's no red dot on Michelin tires that tell you where the heavy spot is. It used to be, but there isn't anymore. But they always have the little barcode, so I'm thinking maybe the barcode is the heavy spot. And I'm going to try something that I don't know if it's going to work, because if it doesn't work, there's no, no hard feelings. But now, I often wondered, this is how much effort it takes to put a tire on. without the duct tape. Now what always would happen is you get to the end and getting this last little bit you're killing yourself. Well these are the things that make it easier is getting the tire warm. So what I did is I brought out my uh, my wonderful heat gun. I'm looking at the thermometer it is 51 degrees out in the garage. That means the tire is 51. So what I'm going to do is heat the tire and I'm going to put the duct tape on in four places but this is the demonstration. The tire really doesn't want to go on. I, even if you put the, uh, the soap on, it's always at the very end you can't get it on. So I wanted to show that and that's the reason. The two things that are going to help. Heat, if we had that sun we could put it on or actually we have a quartz heater here that might even help. 
But getting the tire warm is the next step. Well, I've shown how this would be kind of almost impossible unless you wanted to use tire irons and chew up your rim. But here's the thing, Gorilla Tape. Take a, take a decent sized piece. You don't really, you can even strip it in half if you're, you don't want to put, use up extra tape. This side here, very important. Get it started, but not down in by the bead. Wrap it around the full thing. And what I want to do is I want to use my weight to pinch the tire. Bring that up and around. Of course, I have to get all of that tape out of there. Then I'm going to try to even heat this. I warmed it with the uh, with the the heat gun, but it seems like it it's really cold out here. You don't see it on the video. I don't want to go into the bead. I'm using my weight to pinch it. Or if you have a friend, unfortunately in my case I don't have any friends. And I like to engineer up everything I do in a shop to do it alone because then I never have to depend on anybody if they're busy or some other reason. But this is a good trick. Now once we warm this tire just a little bit more, this just makes doing it so easy and it protects the rim a hundred percent. You don't have any scratching on the rim which is the whole reason for doing this. You don't want to wrap the tape around and around and around. You really want and I've tried doing this with zip ties. I like this way better. Now it'll just be a question of, and Glenn did this when he did his tire. He had a spit for five minutes. I guess we won't let this run for five minutes. I had a little digital thermometer. And by the way, if you look back over the channel, you can see I've posted up probably, well, several videos of uh, Different ways I've tried to change tires because I don't have a tire. I don't have a room for a tire changing machine. Luciano has one, but it's it's an hour ride to go up there and back. And usually when I want to do this, it's at a time that either he's busy or whatever, or we're babysitting. Where this, if I'm all self-contained, it makes it easier for me. Now it doesn't really matter how you heat the tire. Choice one is you put it out in the sun an hour before you do this. Choice two is just tough it out with the, you don't want to burn it either. You just, it would like, you'd like to have it about 120 degrees. We're not going to get it anywhere near 120 degrees today, but. Just the least little bit of heat usually is enough. If it's warm to the touch, you're probably good to go. And all of the tire that, all the rubber that modern tires are made out of, as soon as you warm it up, it gets soft and gummy and turns into a gummy bear. And you remember, you only have to lube one side of the rim. You don't have to put any soap on the other side, only the side that you're going to go down the first time. Anyway, I really want to thank Turbo Steve for that picture. He turned me into Kenny Roberts. But the real trick is, could he turn Kenny Roberts into Wendy? God forbid. That's starting to get warm. It'll take a minute or so. In fact, I ought to do some of this off camera because what's going to happen? In five minutes, you're going to be bored to death. Just got to warm the tire up. Now, this will be interesting because I don't really know how hot I'm going to be able to get this tire. I had it in my lap. I had it down here. It's the problem is it's really just cold in the garage. But I'm going to try this. I'm going to give it the old-fashioned try if it doesn't work. I'll have to use the quartz heater. The quartz heater has more power than this. But the whole trick with all of this, even mounting on a tire machine, if the tire is warm, it just makes it nice and easy. And I was, I was hoping I'd be able to show this, but let's see if it's our lucky day. And I don't know about that balancing thing. Only got to do one side of the rim. You don't even have to do down here, in fact. And I'm going to take a chance that this, this label, yeah, it's the right way. That's the right way. Lucky me. That's going that way. Okay. We'll see if that works. And if the tire balances out nice, then I know it worked. 
Again, this is nowhere near as warm as it should be, so I may have to use a quartz heater. We'll find out. We're going to find out real soon, in fact. One of the few times in life I wish I was fatter. Boy, when a tire isn't warm, it makes it difficult. Ah! Not impossible, just difficult. Boy, if I could have gotten that tire a little warmer, that would have snapped right on. But again, I've had enough of these out on... YouTube must have 10 of them. Now, I am curious to know, I have to cut the tape off. And I have to be very, very careful. This is one of the steps I don't want to leave out on the video for people that really want to do this stuff. Not just be entertained in some way. Here's the trick. Peel this up, and usually if I have rubber gloves on, this is difficult. I gotta make sure none stays in the tire bead. And boy, when a tire is nice and soft, it's so easy. Just run my finger there, make sure that's okay. I get the rest of these off off camera so we don't wind up having a two hour video here. You can hear it pop, in fact. But you do want to make sure, for sure, that you have all the tape out before you try to inflate the tire. Okay, we just need to reinstall the air valve. you'd like to donate to the Wendy's new compressor fund, feel free. Run this around the edge. Now, one extra step I always do, just as a precautionary thing. I know it's overkill, but before I go any further, I want to see if I've got that bead seated, no matter how I put the tire on. If there aren't any bubbles anywhere, that looks pretty good. You'll Believe me, you'll see a bubble right away right away almost instantly and I'll do the same thing around the valve even though those curvy girl valves have been just perfect and I love not having to reach my hand through here to change oh boy is that a pain in the ass curvy girl valves I wish they would sponsor me curvy girl if you would like to sponsor me send me some free valves yeah that looks fine now, obviously, the next step is, and this is going to be a critical thing, because I, I have to notice, I put that little barcode thing even with the, the valve, and I want to see if that's going to result in, I'll take the other weights, well, I may as well see, maybe, maybe it's going to be exactly the same. But it's just funny that, and Glenn and I had this big discussion about the red dot, where does it go, and then 
it it turns out I don't even remember how it turned out but these tires don't have any dot right, before I balance it I just want to run this over the uh, not on a disc Is it's very hard to clean that when it's the fender and the calipers and everything are in the way. Just want to clean that up a minimum amount. Now what will be interesting to see from this point on is where our heavy spot is on this wheel. And I still have the original balancing weight on. Hmm. Now if I put that here and it goes down then we take that balancing weight off. If that side goes down Take that weight off, and we're probably going to be we're going to be perfect with no weights at all. Which maybe and maybe I missed the boat on the Michelin tire thing. Maybe somebody can clue me in with that that little barcode. Maybe it says in uh, in Spanish or something that uh, that's where the the wheel should balance. Anyway, this looks real close without any weights at all. The trick is when it stops in every position and nothing rolls back down real quick. That's about it. Believe me, that's about as good as it gets. And boy, when it's all put together and it's all cleaned up, the rim is clean. I'll throw a little coat of wax on that before I put it back on the bike. It's a thing of beauty. So now basically the next step on this is the reverse of taking it apart. Pretty straightforward. The one tip I wanted to include was I have some little blocks of wood that I put in between the pucks so that I can slide that right onto the calipers nice and easy. And they're really just pieces of paint stick, nothing special, but they do help. Because what happens, here's what happens when you, you go to put this one on, it squeezes this, the opposite puck together. So it's always good if you can get those little wood sticks in there before it actually is time to put them on. Then it doesn't allow it to stick. It pushes the fluid back up into the master cylinder. Just makes it a little bit easier. It's a good tip. And all that is is a little paint stick. And it just, while I'm working on it, it just keeps the, the calipers spread. So I can drop them right on. And these are a very tight fit on an R1. To get them in, you've got to, and not scratch the rim, you've got to really wiggle, 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 jiggle, jiggle. But these are just ordinary paint sticks. And boy, that's a tip worth its weight in gold. Now, if you have an R1, and there's some other bikes that this applies to also, the tip here. What happens when you go to put the axle back, you think it's bottoming out on the other side, and you can't get it lined up. You get frustrated, which I've done in the past. But if you come over here, you notice that what's really happening is this bolt, the axle, has a lip that has to be centered on this side. Once it's centered there, you pretty much can push it in by hand. And having that grease on the axle just makes it a little bit easier. Now, Rich Peabody wanted me to pass on what I think, and he used to own a bike dealership, so I guess this is good information, and I've done this before. I wanted to pass this little tip on. What happens, I've got the bolts down at the bottom of the forks just hand tight so that the axle is stable, but it's not locked in position, and I haven't loctited anything yet. But what I'm going to do is put the calipers on and then put a, a little... Um, zip tie anything actually if you had a helper you could I never have a helper if you had somebody up here that could hold that and compress the forks a few times and what that does the calipers get all centered in there and then tighten up all four of the bolts while that while everything's under compression that's a that's a, a really good tip and I can't see any harm that happens if you forget to do it but it's got to make it a little better if you do that so this part and I don't know that, that this is some secret trick or anything but it seems to work well, the wood, the little wood pieces, we get rid of that. I've always got to be really, really careful about scratching up the rim. Sometimes they stay in, sometimes it's not your lucky day. I guess it was my lucky day. We'll find out in one second. Now at this point I'm only putting the blue Loctite on 
the bolts that are going to be permanently there. The ones on the front of the forks, I want to do that Rich Peabody trick before I put Loctite on. And what I'll do is I'll take each one out individually, Loctite it, torque it down. While I have a, I guess I could put some duct tape or rubber band around there. But we're going to give that a try. And that's a great tip, Rich. I have used it before, but and thanks for sharing it. So everything, the calipers are Loctited in. The only thing loose now, the four bolts that basically control the axle. We're still up on the center stand. And what I wanted to do here, I just want to make sure we're all free. Pump this up a little bit. Make sure we got a free movement here. Now, what I'm going to do, and I, I guess I don't have a bungee cord. I was going to take a bungee cord. Uh, let me see what I see. I don't prepare this as well as I should. I need to get something to wrap around there. So these are all locked in place now. Now what I can do is one by one take each axle screw out. These are just in there hand tight. Take one out, lock tight it, one out, lock tight it. The other side lock tight it and come up and compress the forks and, and hopefully that will be perfectly centered. And sometimes it's these little little things like this that uh, I'm always happy for YouTube and all the, all the sites that share technical information because I've been lucky, lucky enough in my lifetime to know people like Kenny Augustine and Luciano and people that have helped me get a good grip on uh, putting this stuff back together. And boy, I sure hate the thought of leaving my bike at a dealership. There's just something about that rubs me the wrong way. And I don't like being without my bike. Now, each one of these, I'll get the torque wrench later and torque them down, but I want to get these while that, that's under, the, the master cylinder is under compression. And every one of these Loctite bolts now, this should be with a brand new tire, new brakes. I'm just thinking, wow, we got another maybe 4,000 miles of fun riding. Chase and Luciano and Jose and Glenn and Vince and everybody. Now the final thing, and boy, this is the, the part I look forward to more than anything else. Except we're not going to do it today because it's pouring rain out there. But we will be able to get a test ride soon. Get rid of this tape. And this is the part. Boy, when that new tire's on there, I don't know what there is about it. It really feels good. I want to make sure that's nice and Boy, that really feels good. Now, of course, the R1 has a, uh, a completely adjustable suspension, and I'm always tinkering with it. And But you know what? It's all a moot point. The fun of motorcycling is not only the riding, but sometimes doing work, too. And I enjoy the working on it. He's been a good baby. Seven-year-old bike. It still looks pretty good. Well, there you have it. There's the end of our tire changing video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Gotten some tips you can use. Gotten some thoughts, some ideas on uh, stuff you might want to do next time it comes time for a, a tire change on your machines. Anyway, I do enjoy the sharing. And I want to thank all the people that have shared information. I know Bob Navola has put some stuff out on the internet lately. I got to get his, I'll pass it on as soon as I get I got to get his channel and subscribe. We're going to continue working on our camera mounts. We've been playing and certainly not all of them have worked out and we're trying to pass that information on. Of course all the technical stuff. If it comes this winter an appropriate time we're going to paint the wheels and we we do have a spare set of wheels for the Kawasaki all painted up and ready to go. And I was thinking of course it's going to be a long winter coming up. I was thinking of painting the wheels on this. Again, you never know. With our grandson going to school now, our whole schedule has changed. And hey, with, it, with any collection of motorcycles, even a modest collection like this, every day it's a different adventure. And maybe what I'll do if I can find, we had some really funny, and when we were changing tires for Glenn, I had some funny some really funny things happened when I was trying to put the tires on. I have some outtakes. I'll see if I can find any of them, either on the end of this video or on one of the future videos. 
And anyway, hope you enjoyed it again, and thanks for watching. And thanks to Steve to that, for that nice picture of Kenny Roberts, who turned into Wendy. Just wanted Steve to see hey, where we put the picture on our wall of honor. We have some very high honorable things here. Friends, former friends that have passed on. And now we have Kenny Roberts riding Wendy's motorcycle. A little more effort. See, if I was fatter, this would help. And this is where it really pays if you can put the tire out in the sun, or if you have a hair dryer or whatever, I know you can do this a lot easier. But let's just see. I don't want to give up. Or you get one of your really big friends to come over. What this really does show you is how important it is to have the tire warm when you do this, no matter what system you use. And so what we've learned, and what I've been able to show in real time, I hope saving somebody a scratch grim or a, a failed marriage or whatever. Anyway, I really, I really have had a lot of luck doing this most of the time. Let's not say all the time yet. Uh, let's see if we got the tire on right way. We got to look at the, uh, nope, might help. Again, there's no mark as to where the heavy side of the tire is, so we're just going to take pot luck here. Now, <laughs> I know everybody.